for Greer tonight. Yeah, Todd Greer has been asking for this whole time. He's got a main event on national television. This is the night that should lead him to a title shot, finally. Some guys, we talk about hungry fighters, he remembers what it was like to be hungry. Look for big things from him tonight. Well said. There he is, Chicago's very own Joshua Greer Jr. We are ready to go. From the MGM Grand Conference Center in Las Vegas, it is time for our main event. Joshua Greer Jr., Mike Plania, contending bantamweight scheduled for 10 rounds. And if you want to hear your voice attached to this fight in this fanless atmosphere, you can cheer along using Hear Me Cheer on any device. Go to ESPN.HearMeCheer.com to take part. Magic Mike Plania. That nickname based on his elusive defense. It's from the same hometown as Manny Pacquiao in the Philippines. And for Magic Mike, this now his fifth straight fight in the U.S. Said he made a lot of changes to adapt to Josh Greer's style. And that he will do anything to win this fight tonight, ready to extend himself to the fullest. Joshua Greer, born and raised on the south side of Chicago. You know the stories well told of being in and out of trouble as a teen. He fights for a fallen friend who was lost to the street violence in Chicago, Ed Brown. Greer himself survived the drive-by shooting in recent years. Nineteen fights in a row he has won. Top ten on ESPN.com's list of Bantamweights. Number one in the WBO. Could be a title shot coming very soon if he can get past Mike Plania. The Tale of the Tape is presented by Geico. And let's talk about competition when we size these two up. Now, Planning is a couple inches taller, but look at that last line of the last five opponents. Greer's last five, they have a win percentage of 81%. Planning is 43%. For the official introductions, here's Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside the MGM Grand Conference Center in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is boxing presented by Bob Arum's Top Rank. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the bantamweight division. Judges at ringside, Tim Cheatham, Patricia Morse Jarman, and Dave Moretti. The man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Tony Weeks. This is boxing, this is Top Rank, and this is the main event. Fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 119 and a half pounds, wearing gold trunks with black trim. He enters the ring with a record of 23 wins, one loss, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. From General Santos City, Philippines, Magic 
Mike Plania! Fighting out of the red corner, presented in association with Antonio Leonard Promotions. He weighed in at 120 pounds. He is wearing black trunks. He enters the ring with a record of 22 wins, one loss, one draw, 12 wins by way of knockout. He is the WBO number one ranked bantamweight contender from Chicago, Illinois, Joshua, don't blink, Greer Jr. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Right here is good. Right here is good. You want a good, clean fight? Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. Guys, I'm interested to see the output of Josh Greer Jr. tonight. And we have tracked him for a long time, broadcast many of his fights. His first six fights that CopyBox was tracking, he was throwing over 66 punches per round. But in his last three, his output has dropped to just over 45. So something we will monitor to see how much he gets to work, how busy he is. Utilizing the jab early on here to get things started. I'd like to see Josh Greer tonight do exactly what he's doing. Take his time. Put the pillow away for now. Get your jab going and get a good rhythm. And then if the shot opens up, it'll be there. But don't force the knockout. Don't get caught up in, in, in you know, the moniker of Night Night. That's what's kind of set him back, I think, the last couple of fights. Is he's trying too hard. He needs to let the fight come to him like he's doing right now. That's it. Plania told us in the fighter meeting yesterday that he wants to be patient. That's not really his style either. He's a, a guy who likes to apply pressure. I'm seeing patience now, so I want to see how this, this newfound, you know, mindset from Plania works out for him against a guy like Josh Greer. Oh! oh he man. punched Greer down! Three! Three. A left Ten. hand! Floors Five. Greer! Six! Seven! Eight. Well, Come what do we have oh, here? Halfway through round one, and Plania has scored the knockdown. And now how I said Plania Josh had Greer explosive react. punching power. Tess, I said that he has explosive punching power. That shot came out of nowhere. That was a lead left hook from Plania. And now he steps to Greer. Every said, I don't want to rush things, but look at this surge he has early on. What an incredible way for Plania to start off his night. A left hook scoring the knockdown in the middle of this first round. And now a right hand comes in from the Filipino fighter. He's very explosive and unpredictable, Plania. Greer trying to settle back in, and he does so with a right hand to the body. Plania just looks so much bigger, his upper body and his legs, than Joshua Greer tonight. He's got two and a half inches on Greer. We were checked in at 5'4", 120 on the scale. Planning came in at 119 and a half. Ten seconds. Of course, the time to rehydrate. Yes. I got it. I got the bug. Big the way bucket. to start the evening for the upset-seeking Mike Plania. What does he do? Greer was looking for a jab to come. No, nope. it was a lead left hook coming from Plania. That's all you gotta do. Keep it. Sit down. Take all the time. Set him down. You know what? Greer was actually shooting the jab. Dropped his right hand Greer in the process. Don't be too anxious. Just relax. Okay. And landed the big left hook. He fainted right there. Stick, Joshua Greer kind of dropped his right okay. hand, and Plania timed him. Perfectly Keep your on the chin. Up and don't back up, okay? You're doing good. Good job. Come on. 
Guys, how challenging is it to stay the course with a game plan when something like that happens in round one? To tell yourself to still be disciplined. To tell yourself to stay on Test. course with what you planned. It's very challenging, Tess, because the first thing that comes to heart is you want to go straight to the guy. So, But you got to use your head and be smart in there. And you got to stick to the game plan. That's it. Just discipline, Tess. That's what it's all about. Discipline. And you see Greer trying to do that right now. Yeah, Greer's responding the right way, at least as of right now. But yes, you got to deal with embarrassment. Your pride is hurt. You're angry. It's, 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 it's a bunch of emotions that's going through your mind and body. But Timothy is right. You got to stay disciplined or you'll find yourself right back down there again. That's it. The one thing I don't like from Greer right now, he got his chin up in the air. His eyes are wide open, but that chin is up in the air. He needs to tuck that chin down in his chest. So that's Bernardo, he what were they them left hooks. Bernardo, what were they saying in the corner of Greer after that knockdown? George Hernandez says, look, he wasn't hurt. Fortunately, he recovered well, but he's got to stay alert. He's got to keep his hands up, and he's got to be patient. It's only the first round. He's got time to recover. I like the Greer from move, the movement from Greer, but he needs to get on his jab, and he needs to let his combinations go out at distance, and then think about defense after. That's it. Go ahead, movement. Give me some feints. That's it. Right hand to the body from Greer. Yeah, Tess, you got to keep a guy like Plainy, you got to keep him busy. You can't allow him to think and take his time and try to line you up for a big shot. Let those hands go, Greer. Twos and threes. Oh, there it is again. Again from Plania. So that is where he has been finding success here. That knockdown. In the first round when Greer Jr. dropped his right hand, was stunned, was floored. And Tess, he dropped that right hand again, and he got caught in the same spot. Let's see if he makes an adjustment. Ten seconds. Lania and Greer coming to the end of round two in Vegas. Joe and the crew with you. Our main event from Vegas here. Mike Plania, the Filipino fighter who's 23 and 1, who scored the knockdown halfway through round one. Mark Riegel against Josh Greer. Josh Greer's had some slow starts in his career. Well, a word of encouragement yeah, yeah. For, for Greer fans. Yeah. Last year, we saw him get dropped in the third round against Giovanni Escanier. Came back to win by knockout in round eight. That was back in February of 2019. Four times in his career, he has been knocked down previous to this. Good, strong. See that little flick jab by Plania? Yes. You see that little flick jab? He's trying to bring that right hand forward. So, so Greer can get used to it. Then he's gonna try to nail him with that left hook again. He's setting it up. I'm impressed with the patience of Plania right now. He told us this much, and I said this earlier, that he would be patient, and he's doing that. I haven't seen him this patient in any of his fights. He's trying to line Greer up, like you said, Tim, for that perfect shot. He just landed another good left hook right there. But also credit to Greer for recovering and getting back to the game plan. He's boxing rail right now, but Plania is still trying to land up a big, land a big shot. One thing that I noticed, Dre, when you attack Plania, he gets out of position. He's not set like he is when he's moving forward. But I don't think Greer has noticed that. Very good. Defense, defense. 
But I think right now Joshua Greer is just trying not to get dirty. And what I mean by that is he doesn't really want to get touched. He's already been down. He's trying to box this perfect fight. And you all hear me say this all the time, that when you're facing a puncher, there's a time and a place to slip inside, get some work off, get your respect, tie up and reset. Greer hasn't done that yet. He's boxing well, but he needs to get inside in spots to get the respect of plenty. You know, reminds and, and yes, me of, when he uh, does go inside, he will be in the lion's den, Joe. But we're going we're to go to the other side of the weight spectrum in having this conversation because it's, it's not dissimilar to the conversation we had with Tyson Fury when he reflected on the first strategy he tried to put forth against Deontay Wilder of saying it's tough to throw a no-hitter for 12 rounds. It's tough to try to be so perfect. Well, it's not just tough, but it's draining physically yes. and mentally. And I was always taught, and it's counterintuitive, but if you do it right, it can work. You don't always go away from power. Sometimes you have to come to the power and smother it, get your work on, and then get out. Yeah. And it can make it easier, a much easier night when you have that balance and that approach. Coming to the end of three, live from Vegas. Round four of our main event from the MGM Grand Conference Center. A reminder that Sports Center with SVP is coming up as he will have details on the NBA bubble from our boxing bubble to Scotty in the NBA bubble coming up. Phil Mickelson's turning 50 and the Madden cover is revealed. That is coming up on Sports Center with SVP once we get through with this critical main event in the Bantamweight division. All the title hopes for Josh Greer on the line. Number one contender at the WBO, top 10 in ESPN.com, and he was floored in the first round. In tough tonight against Mike Plania. I see what Greer's trying to do. He's trying to bring the tempo up a little bit and get his hands working. But he went down to the body with that right hand quite a bit. Plenty has a really good right uppercut. He has to be careful dipping down that low, trying to go down to the body. And what did we just see again? That lead left hook from Plenty. Greer can't Joe, do anything about it. Has, he needs has a mind that. of his own. It's almost like Plenty just whips it in there. He doesn't throw it hard, but it lands hard. And it's a real good way you just described Natural it, Natural punch from Michael Plenty. It is. It is. It's wiry, and it has some speed to it. Right. He doesn't telegraph. Hey, he doesn't leap fighter. forward. He just stands in place and just whips it in there. At some point, I think Greer's going to have to slip inside and touch the body of Plania. Get some uppercuts in there, rough him up, let him know that, hey, I'm physical too. I'm not going to stay here with you all night long, but when I choose to be here, I'm going to be the boss. He's got he's to take some, some calculated risk at some point in time. To get his respect, Dre. Absolutely. I agree with you. But what I'm seeing from Greer right now, he's moving towards that left hand. I will move away from that left hand. I will move the opposite way and use my jab. And don't allow him. I want him to reach for that left hook. That way. Yes, that way. Use that jab that way. Keep that right hand up. But instead, they're now circling to his right. And left hook again from Planey, but that time Greer able to get out of the way. Show number three of our new summer series live continues to go the course of Mike Plania as it stands. There it is, right there. You see Plenty get out of position and square it up. Once Greer came in with a one-two combination, those are opportunities for Greer to make them pay. That's it. 
There you go. I told you that's it. It's amazing the audio we have with this fanless atmosphere because you can hear George Hernandez, 66-year-old original trainer of Greer. Then he went away, went to California, came back to Chicago. But it, it's almost like you're listening into the conversation between trainer and fighter, and typically with the roar of the crowd and the arena atmospheres, we normally are televised fights, and you would never have this one. Encouragement coming from yeah, no, you're right, Joe. But 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 for fighters, this is what we're used to. You know, not in a in a a fight setting, a real fight setting on fight night. But but every day in the gym, this is what you hear. You hear two coaches yelling back and forth. You got to compartmentalize your coach, tune out the other coach, get your work in. Like this is what we've always known. Okay, here we go. Keep him up. Time in. Let's go. I used to take it personal, Joe, when I used to hear other yeah, coaches say yeah. reckless <laughs> things about me and say, oh, he's I tired. Mean, yeah. Oh, he can't take a shot. That used to motivate me. <laughs> By the way, Timmy, the least <laughs> shocking thing I could hear in tonight's broadcast that Dre would take it that way. <laughs> yeah. Give me anything. Yeah. I'll take any motivation you give me. <laughs> that just surprised me at all. <laughs> We're trying to dig that left hand to the body. Danny was trying to meet him with a left of his own. <laughs> There's another level to that offense test for Greer. He doesn't know it yet. You always got to be a step or two ahead of your opponent. You got to expect something coming back, and then you got to react to whatever he does. So you can start, and you can also finish. That's the next level. That's the elite level. Greer's throwing one shot at a time. That's it. good. Okay, now what? Greer, now what? He just landed a combination. He yeah. just ran away. Now yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm bye talking bye. about, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, bye, bye. End of five here, live from Vegas. <laughs> ah!